Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Ephesians. All right. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. Mm, come on. We will begin at verse 10. Great stuff. Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus right. chapter 6. We will read verses 10 through 18. When you have found it, would you say amen? Amen. amen? Hear now the word of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord yes, and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, Talk but against principalities, yes. against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, yes. against spiritual hosts of wickedness yes. in the heavenly places. Well. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Yes. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Amen. 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 Just a few moments, and with the help of the Holy Ghost, we would like to use as a subject from which to preach on this men's day, a fight to the finish. Right. A right. fight yeah. to the finish. Right. It is not the critic who counts. Right. Not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done better. Talk so. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, yeah. whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, Great. who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, All right. but who actually strives to do the deed who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, yeah, yeah. who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, mm -hmm. and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while bearing grief, well. so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. New Sardis, these words were first uttered 117 years ago. But for my brothers listening and perhaps watching, striving to give God and their families their absolute best, they ring relevant and true. All right. Every man battles in pursuit man. of what God has called him to do. All right. Pushing and pressing towards his purpose striving to achieve what he has dreamed, overcoming obstacles, navigating the potholes and detours that life will shortly present. Amen. It would be hard enough to dare greatly and valiantly in solitude and seclusion, well. cut off and cut away from the people around us, socially distanced from the responsibilities of manly obligations, but courage and our callings compel us to live with the audacity to step into the arena. Yeah. 
the arena calls us from the safety and security of the sidelines. Well, it speaks to life out in the open, yeah. out from the climate control comfort of the locker room or the man cave. The arena is life on public display in full view of the lights and the camera and even the action. That's right. Brothers, how dare we live with the courage to step into the arena? Oh, how sorry. dare we develop the eyesight and yes. insight of lions to dare greatly, not just in view of cameras, yes. but in the view of critics. Yes. Critics and their criticism yes. of all around. Distant observers with no skin in the game. Quick to offer opinions over matters they don't have the courage to do themselves. Insecure and unsure of who they are. Living with no idea of what it takes to be you, let alone do you. And to make matters worse, critics rejoice. when they find us in the midst of losing battle. Yeah. Our best laid plans perhaps have gone awry. Uh -huh. Dreams for the future deferred. Hopes not yet realized, not yet in the place we just knew we would be in by now. Folk and stuff coming for you. Attacks on every side. Brothers, here we are battling with the best of who we are and what we have, yet for one reason or another, life can find us in losing battles. Yes, sir. And in these losing battle moments, in these losing battle seasons, our souls can reach their boiling point and cry out, this is all too much. Yeah. It was too much before COVID-19. Yeah. It was too much before George Floyd. It was too yeah. much before yeah. food and job insecurity. Yeah. And now we literally don't know what the next day will bring. Yeah. How in the world do we win when all around us we are surrounded by circumstances that can be characterized as a losing battle? How do we maintain a healthy state of being when it's all too much? Yeah. Yes, life can sometimes be full of losing yes, battles. Yeah. Yes, it can all be can. too much when it feels yes, like sir. our best is not yes, enough. Sir. But yes, as a means of getting yes, our sir. minds right, yes, sir. as a means of seeing us wiser and stronger for the future that yet lies ahead. Yes, the sir. Lord our God summons us into the arena yes, sir. and you may be prepared to fight. Yeah. To fight for everything God has promised. Uh -huh. To fight for everything we've prayed for. Yes, for everything sir. we've dreamed about. Yes, for every sir. blessing God has said Please, is already sir. Leader, here you stand with the courage of a lion to face yeah. and fight anything and everything that might be standing in your way. And God says, That's good. Yes, sir. That's good because this is not your run of the mill sparring match. Oh, stop. This is not your ordinary street level fist fight. This is a fight yeah. to the finish. Yes, sir. A fight for all the marbles. A fight Great, for all sir. the keeps. A fight yeah. to bring finality to the matter yes, of your sir. ability to live, yes, breathe, sir. and have your being. When the enemy would love nothing more than to steal, kill, and destroy yeah. you yeah. and everything God has yeah. for you. Don't miss the blessing. 
When we give God the space to lead us and guide us. Yeah. When we give God the room to accompany us into the fight. Mm. Here it is. You'll be the last man standing. Uh -huh. That's good news. Yes, that is good. And all your fight. Yeah. Yeah. All your battling to yeah. stand your ground in the arena. Yeah. To stand your ground in what yeah. is sometimes an ugly mess yes, in this sir. wretched and evil world. Yes, sir. Won't be in vain. No. In other words, it's going to be worth your time. It's worth my time. Nothing will be wasted. God is so loving and God is so protective. God lets you know what fight When you fight using my strategy. That's right. When you fight using the weapons I have. When it's all over. You'll be the last man. And in this place of setting the stage for this yeah. hour rumble in the jungle. Come on, letting contextual groundwork for what this fight is and what this fight is not is right where we find Paul in our text. All right. Paul yeah. is wrapping up a letter to a church he helped organize. The church at Ephesus. Yeah. Paul has been throwing theological blows for the entire letter. Yeah. He says, look what you heard. Yeah. You are not saved by works. Yeah. By your acts of charity or service. You are yeah. not saved by being a good person. You uh -huh. are saved by grace. Yes, yes. Yes. man, yes. woman yes. Yes. we are no longer strangers or foreigners. We are fellow citizens in the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Nobody but Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. Here we arrive at the tenth verse of the sixth and final chapter. Paul says in so many words, well, as we bring this letter to a close, here it is, God is strong and God wants you strong. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. This reality that God wants you strong speaks to the nature of who God is and the nature of God's expectations. If God wants you strong, it means that even while we are in our fight, God has our future in mind. If God wants you strong, it says there's more to come after the fight is over. Yeah. It means we can't stay where we are. We uh -huh. can't fly the plane on autopilot. We can't drive on cruise control. Uh -huh. We can't tread water while we should be making progress. Yeah. We can't mark time yeah. in our march of faith. If God wants you strong, it means there is a means by which God wants you to get strong. If God wants you strong, it means God is secure enough in himself that God feels like you can acquire a greater degree of strength than you have right now and handle it. The question I can hear all of you asking is, preacher, why? Why? But God called me out from where I was. Uh -huh. The place of minding yeah. my own business right. and summoning me into the arena for a fight right. to finish. Yeah. Why must I face these enemies and why must I face them right now? Right. Why is the fight so hard? Why does every step forward feel like two steps oh. back? Why won't God right. just let me get back to oh. doing what I was doing? Yes, sir. God says the reason why you are summoned into the fight yes. come on, come on. is because the fight reveals what you are made of. All right. The fight reveals what you are made of. Everybody is a big shot. Until it's time to get into the fight. Yeah. Everybody, brothers 
Elvis is a Monday morning quarterback. Yeah. And they don't have to suit up and get into the game. That's right. Everybody is a critic. Yeah. But it's not their name on the line. That's right. Everybody's got something to yeah. say yeah. until it's time to get into oh, the arena yeah. for yeah. themselves. Yeah. This fight to the finish is a revealer yeah. of what you are oh. made of. In your fight. The true nature of who you are. The quality of the fabric of your being. That's right. The essence of your character right. comes to the surface yes. when you step into the arena right. and prepare to fight. When life knocks you down, what are you prepared to do yes. to get back up? That is within you. Hallelujah. It's in the fight yeah. where boys become men. Yeah. It's in the fight where the saints of the church become soldiers for Christ. Yeah. It's in the fight where all the things and people that don't really matter must be laid aside. Right. How will you allow your fight to reveal who you are? Here it is, when you find your why, the why in your fight, you will find your way. Yeah. You will find your way to turn the corner, to make the shift, to up the ante, to face your fears, and to get past your doubts. Yeah. All right. With great boldness and courage, you will step out from the sidelines yes, and set foot in uh -huh. the arena. Yes, Brothers on Wednesday, and in this season, God is calling us. God is summoning us onto the battlefield for a fight yes. to the finish. All right. As a means of answering all our questions of why God says the fight is designed yeah. to reveal what you are made of. All right. But on top of our questions of why, somebody is asking questions of how. Right. How in the world can we achieve victory over the enemies we face? All right. Paul, you already said it. Who and what we are facing is more than we can handle on our own. Well, what can we do? What can I do? Lord, you know who I am. You know my shortcomings. You know my weaknesses. You know my rap sheet. You know every reason that Let alone on top. Yeah. And God says the how is attached to what I provide. Where? God says I'm so conscious. Uh -huh. I supply weapons that cover yes. your weak spots. Where? God says I'm so conscious. I'm so aware of what is going on around you. I supply weapons that cover your weak spots. I'm so aware of not only what you need, but also when you need it. Oh, that before you go to your fight for the yeah. finish, I supply weapons that cover your weak spots. Paul writes, these are well-made weapons of the best materials. He goes on to say that truth and righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words clearly showing us that in our fights to the finish, these things are indeed yeah. weapons. Yeah. Yes. We hear in other translations where Paul, and even this text from today, he gives insight on the belt of truth and uh -huh. the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace, yeah. the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, yeah. which is the word of God. Weapons to guard our minds. Yes. Perhaps the place of crippling memories that have had us roadblocks from envisioning a brighter tomorrow. Right, right. Weapons to guard our hearts. Yes. Perhaps the place of past traumas that have present, prevented us from 
from being open to new possibilities, weapons to guard our feet, perhaps addressing realities that in our past we may have strayed away from God's perfect will for our lives. But here's the thing about weapons. We can be equipped with the latest technology of weapons, but weapons only work when we know how to use them in the thick right. of the fight. That's right. That's what right. good is it? That's right. To be overly confident with the number of weapons on our utility belt. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to use them in the midst of our fight. What good does it do to memorize the Bible for worship uh -huh. if it doesn't help our walk during the week? Uh -huh. How is anybody uh -huh. help if we Words, yeah. but those words are never converted into any works. Well, At the end of the day, how are you using what God has given you? Yeah. God does not call you to an assignment he has not equipped you for. Amen. God does not summon you to the arena unless there's something within you to be pulled Hallelujah. to the service. Right. Yeah. These are the blessings of knowing how to use our weapons. Yeah. And God says once you learn how to use them, once you step into the arena to fight this good fight of faith to the finish, uh -huh. you've got to stay in the fight long enough uh -huh. to see how effective your weapons are. That's right. It means you can't retreat, brothers, at the first sign of opposition. Oh, the fight may good. require you to pray more than once. Yeah. The fight may require you to tune into worship more than one Sunday out of the month. Oh, yeah. The fight oh. may require you to fast longer than one meal. Right. In other yeah. words, the weapons of God are most effective with continuous use. That's right. It means we can't dibble dabble in it. Oh. Stop dipping your toes in it yeah. and immerse yourself yes, into the Lord's yes, army yes, so you can be used at his disposal. Yes, yes. Brothers, the fact of the matter is God has summoned us into the arena for a fight to the finish. Amen. In response to all our questions of why, God says the fight will reveal what you are made of. Hallelujah. The fight will separate yes. the wheat from yes. the tares. The, yes. the real from the oversized boys playing the role of man, answering yeah. our questions of how. Yeah. God says, I'm so conscious. Yeah. I'm so woke. I don't let you go into the fight by yourself. Yeah. I supply the weapons to cover yeah. your weak spots. Yeah, sir. But even now, across the sanctuary, somebody is asking questions of what? What is the ultimate goal or objective? Uh -huh. What posture would God see us assume in and through the fight? And on men's day, God says to us, fully embrace the power of your standing. Fully embrace the power of your standing. We see it more clearly here when Paul says, take up the whole armor of God. And you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Never underestimate the power and testimony wrapped up in your ability to stand. In and through this fight to the finish, given the nature of our enemy and all his devices, it will require much to stand. It's easy to stand mm -hmm. when nothing is going on. Easy. When you're not in the line of fire. Yeah. When bullets are not whizzing yeah. past your head. Yeah. When the sun is shining yeah. on your parade. Yeah. When you are not weighed down yeah. by some armor. Yeah. But what is your posture in this fight to the finish? Oh. God says that in and through the fight, standing signifies Blood is still running warm in your veins. The knockdown did not knock you out. The fire did not consume you. The waters did not overwhelm you. You're still here. You made it through. You still got your bearings. You still have a sense of equilibrium. There's a testimony 
and your ability to be found standing. Yet by now I'm sure somebody listening, somebody watching is adding this all up. This is an answer to God's summons to appear in the arena. This is a fight to the finish. Paul has already said that in our flesh, this is all too much for us to handle. Yeah. Yes. Brothers, what do we do when it's all too much? When, it gets too much. when life and family are too much to handle, when the odds are stacked against us, when life is not adding up the way right. it's supposed to, when the plans are not working out with what you used to have. You don't have any more. Just nine years ago, in 2015, we saw the release of the critically acclaimed movie, Creed. Yeah. It tells the story of Donnie Johnson Creed, the son of Apollo Creed from the popular Rocky series. Like his father, Apollo, Donnie, played by Michael B. Jordan, is an exceptional boxer for the majority of his young career. The movie culminates with Donnie fighting a formidable Russian opponent, a fight in which no one expects him to be competitive, let alone win. Much to the surprise of everyone watching, Donnie goes the distance with the fight ending in a split decision. When the scene shifts to the locker room, Rocky, Donnie's trainer, asks him point blank, how in the world did you go the distance? Yeah. Nobody expected you to last as long as you did. How were you able to keep your standing? And Donnie says to Rocky, I was able to do it because I remembered who was in my corner. Amen. And brothers, yeah. Should anybody ask you, yeah. how have you achieved victory in your fight to the finish? Oh, how God. have you withstood yeah. the pressure of the cameras yes, and the lights? Yeah. How in the world are you still standing? Yeah. All you have to say is, I remember who's in my corner. Who's in my corner. Yeah. In my corner yeah. is our firm foundation. Yeah. In my corner yeah. is the ancient. Yes, sir. 